What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today I'm gonna give you a little tour of my home studio slash my content creation rig for YouTube. Let's do it. All right guys, hope you're doing great out there today. If this is your first time here at my channel, my name is Kyle, and what I do is I take awesome high gain guitar amps, speakers, cabs, pickups, overdrives, stuff of that nature. I record it with a simple setup and I give you guys the unprocessed audio on your end. And today I'm gonna give you a little tour of my content creation rig in my home studio and show you how exactly it is that I create that stuff, the equipment that I use, and just a general little tour of my humble abode. Many of you guys have asked me to give you a tour of basically my cameras, my audio equipment, show you exactly what my signal chain is for my videos. So that's uh, that's what we're gonna do today. And I have a couple different spots that I film in. I have a couple different rigs that I use. So without further ado, why don't we uh, go ahead and jump in and I'll get to showing you guys my stuff. That was the rest of that sentence. Let's go. All right guys, so if you've been around my channel for a minute, you're probably familiar with some of these rooms as these are part of my gear collection tour videos that I do every year, but this is gonna be a little different. I'm basically just showing you what it is I use to actually create my videos um, as, as well as you know record tones if I'm just recording on my own. So up here, I have my, this is basically my editing desk. I've got a Samsung ultra wide 34 inch HD monitor here that makes it really easy to edit timelines because we get a nice wide view of everything. And obviously I have Reaper pulled up. Reaper is the DAW that I use in order to record all of my videos because it's cheap, it works great. And that's really all that I need for what I do. So um, as far as my monitors up here, I currently have a pair of the JBL 305P Mark II monitors. These are great little monitors. They are the five inch uh, versions of the eight inch monitors that I have downstairs. I actually got these for like 25 bucks at a local warehouse blowout sale because this one has a little bit of a tear in the woofer, but Honestly, when you listen back to them, I, I can't tell. And I don't listen to things at high volumes when I'm mixing or recording my audio. So those woofers aren't really moving and nothing sounds wrong with them. They sound great. Uh, so I was gonna replace that woofer, but it's serving the purpose for the time being. And I don't need super duper accurate audio in this room because generally I do most of my mixing downstairs for my videos. Um, but with that being said, this is the interface that I use up here. This is the Black Lion Audio Revolution 2x2. This is an extremely uh, clean sounding, especially the DAC on this or the digital audio conversion for like the headphones or for the monitors themselves. It just sounds really, really good. I got a, uh, deal on one of these when they were being blown out through Musician's Friend. I think I got it for something like 280 bucks brand new. I actually bought two of them thinking I was gonna use the other one for a downstairs rig, but I am not going to do that because I have my focus right and I don't need that nice of a interface for basically what is just another spare room. Um, I like to do things over the top typically as is and I just don't need to do that. But anyways, yeah, if you'd like to buy that second one, hit me up, I'll sell it to you for what I paid for it. Anyways, over here, I've kind of set this back up to be a little bit of a live stream type deal as well. For the camera in this room, I have a Sony a6400. That is a 4K camera. You get extremely crisp uh, video out of those cameras. And for the longest time, up until very recently, these were my main cameras. I have a little cheap mic that Kevin Pumala gave me at NAMM just to capture some audio from the camera in case my audio on uh, here basically goofs up for any reason. And I also have a monitor or, you know, a little field monitor on here, seven inch HD field monitor. The only reason I have that on here is because this camera, unfortunately it fell off the stand at one point and it broke the ribbon cable to the flip up screen here. So I have to have this monitor plugged in in order to see what I'm doing with this camera. So that's why it kind of lives up here. But I did a lot of plug-in videos in this room for a while and uh, kind of took a break from it because it became a catch-all. As you can see, it's, it's already overloaded with gear, but I recently kind of cleaned and organized it, turned it into a little jam space 
um, basically because the basement, I just, I need natural light. So I turn this into a room where I actually can come upstairs and play when it's nice out and not feel depressed being stuck in the basement all day. But yeah, um, we're going to do some more live streams and stuff like that in this room sometime in the near future because uh, the room sounds good and it's nice and cozy and uh, I want to. Okay guys, so another important aspect of the content creator rig is uh, my video editing software. So over here on my laptop, I have the software pulled up that I use, which is called Shotcut. The great thing about Shotcut is it's free. So if you're looking to make videos for yourself, you can download Shotcut on either Windows or Mac. It'll be 100% free. You'll get full functionality of the program. And uh, this is what I've used since I've started my channel. I probably should move to a slightly more advanced software where I can get a little bit better editing capabilities in it, but I've just grown to become really comfortable with Shotcut. And in here you can see with uh, my five camera setup that I have down in the basement, which I'll, guide, I'll show you guys shortly, you guys can see I have all five of my cameras pulled up here. And basically all I do is I go in this shortcut program, I time align every single video file with the audio file that comes out of my interface and my microphones that you'll also see here in a moment. And I basically pick and choose which clips uh, from which camera angle that I want. I edit them all down to a single track single audio, single video, and then I add my music and sound effects over top of that, and again, it's free. And this is what I've used since the start. I really honestly dig it. But yeah, that's a very important part of the content creator rig is the video editing software. So that's what I use. Okay guys, so down here, this is my main room where I record all of my videos. I'm gonna try to zoom out as much as I can here. Um, so yeah, as you can see, this is a really small room. All it is is a finished basement and I have it pretty much packed as, as much as it can be with gear down here. Basically just to set the mood, I have found since I set up these amp walls in my videos, it seems like people, it's, it's silly, but it seems like people take my word a little bit more seriously on the reviews that I'm doing because they can see that whatever amp that it is I'm demoing at the time is not the only amp I own and I have experience with other stuff. So just figured I'd kind of let you in on that. Um, over here, this is the SM57 setup that is used on every single one of my amp demos. This is the actual mic that I've been using since the start. I use the same SM57 in every single video uh, just to try to give you guys the most consistent sound production that I possibly can. Over here, let's move over to the audio interface. Um, I use my, my MacBook. This is an M1 MacBook Air, 16 gigabyte RAM version. This is a great little content creation laptop. And honestly, um, I think that I got this one used for like 900 bucks. It has been an absolute workhorse. I am not a Mac guy, but this the battery life on this thing is absolutely incredible. This thing can edit my 4K videos just as good as my large custom built PC that I made last year. So if you guys are looking into a good laptop for 4K video editing or video editing in general, getting one of these MacBook M1 used, I know the M2s are out now, but if you can find a good deal on these M1 MacBook Airs or Pros, I highly suggest just grabbing something like that in order to do it. As you can see, my cable management is atrocious. This is actually as clean as this area has been for a while. So uh, I feel good about it, but I can understand if you guys don't. But anyways, down here, this is my main audio interface that I've been using for quite some time. This is the Personas Studio 1810C. It's a really solid uh, interface. It's got great clean preamps. This has USB-C connectivity and it just has really low latency. It's a really great interface and it does have digital out and digital in so I can connect this Personas Digimax D8 to it and I get 12 channels of really nice clean preamps from Presonus. They did not pay me. Uh, they did not send me these interfaces. I bought these with my own money. I actually have another one of these for my main drum mic or my main drum recording rig that uh, is in the other room. And yeah, I have this one here essentially if I ever need to do something where I need more than four channels because I got the, the Digimax D8 for like a hundred bucks. Figured why not just throw it on here in case I ever need the extra space. So 
Up here, this is a cheap $30 lav mic that I bought on Amazon from a brand called Comica. It's just a Chinese brand. And this is the lav mic that you guys hear in all of my videos. So this thing has been awesome. 30 bucks, I haven't had any issues with it. I do go in and edit the audio to uh, basically sound a little bit better on my voice to get it sounding as good as I can. And I doubt that many people would know that it is a $30 lav mic that just connects via XLR. But I did get a nice little upgrade here that I haven't installed yet. This is the Sennheiser Evolution Wireless Digital Lav Mic Set. I'm super pumped to install this thing because the mic that I'm talking on right now is also a Sennheiser USB-C mic that plugs into my phone and sounds incredible. And it does sound much better than this USB, or I'm sorry, this XLR mic that I got for 30 bucks. And I'm expecting that this setup is going to sound even better than that. And it's gonna be wireless. So it's going to reduce some of this clutter that you guys see here, which I am definitely looking forward to because the cables tend to get in the way. I've actually knocked guitars over by, you know, having cables just all over the place when I'm doing crazy experiments and stuff and I really would like to get away from that so yeah you're gonna guys you guys are going to see this thing being installed very soon and I really can't wait to set it up because I am really looking forward to basically just upping the video quality here's what I'm talking about lighting guys obviously other than the lens flare and my stupid glasses as you can see with the uh, good lighting down here in the basement, this video quality probably looks more than sufficient for serious content creation. And I'm not even positioned correctly in the light, but I can see looking in my screen, I'm using the front facing camera and this thing still looks incredible. So you really don't need an expensive camera in order to make really quality high quality, good quality YouTube content. You really just need a solid, cheap audio interface, a solid, cheap microphone, and a lighting kit that you can purchase on Amazon for like 60 bucks for the whole thing with some soft boxes. They really go a long way in making the video quality look much more professional. So with that little rant out of the way, I'm gonna tell you about my multi-thousand dollar camera setup. So here we have my main camera and I understand the light's probably not great. Let me actually turn this crappy little $30 ring light on. And yeah, this is my Sony a7 IV. I recently got this because I just really wanted to upgrade my video quality. There I am. And a lot of you guys have noticed that my main cam looks better, especially in my single shot type videos. So I'm glad that it was money well spent. Um, I am in firmly in terms of cameras. Um, I have a bunch of the a6400s because you guys know that I do the multi-camera thing. I'm about to show you those in a second but I have an a7 III as well, and all of the lenses, even though these are full frames and the a6400s are what is called APS-C, which means there is, they are a smaller sensor, all of the lenses are interchangeable, so I didn't have to buy new lenses when I upgraded to these full frame cameras. There is a little bit of a crop in, but still, these lenses work great on these cameras, and I highly advise you, if you are going to invest in cameras, guys, invest in something where the upgrade path allows you to use your nice lenses because the lenses are typically more important than the camera. I started my entire channel out on some Sony a6000 cameras, which are 1080p mirrorless APS-C cameras. I still have a couple of them laying around. They are really great quality, especially have, if you have the great lighting, but what makes them look even better is getting a good lens like Sigma 16 millimeter here. This is a $400 lens, but man, you would not guess that this thing costs 400 bucks. It has basically been my main shot lens for uh, pretty much ever since I started my YouTube channel and got the Sony a6000 camera, which was maybe a month into it. So getting a good lens is going to make a big difference. Same thing right here. This is my amp camera and I have a Sigma 30 millimeter lens. These are like 300 bucks new. These are incredibly sharp. The autofocus is incredibly fast. They look way better than the kit lenses on the stock Sony's that you buy. I'm going on a whole rant about cameras here, but a lot of you guys have been curious about the cameras that I use. So this is an A6300. I bought this on um, Facebook Marketplace for something like 350 bucks, maybe a year and a half ago. And I got a 50 millimeter Sony 1. F1.8 lens that I still use to this day for a lot of shots as well. 
So the good deals are out there, guys. You just have to look for them. This is my main light. This is the light that kind of lights the right side of my face, lights my guitar up and everything. This is, I forget the exact model, but it's like a GVM. It was a model that I bought off of Amazon brand new for something like 85 bucks when it was on sale. And then I went ahead and bought this uh, soft box. It's a Godox, as you can see, for something like 80 bucks when it was on sale as well. I think it's like a 90 centimeter soft box. As you can see, man, this thing is really large in my room. Uh, the it basically touches the ceiling, so it's kind of hard to position it correctly. But getting these soft boxes, especially with the grid, the light diffusers here, made a big difference. And over here, I've got a newer LED panel. This is an LED flat panel, as you can see and I bought a little soft box for it as well. Uh, this panel was something like 60 bucks on Prime Day and then the soft box was like 40. So $100 for this light and over here, roughly $160 for this light. That's not very much, guys. When you think about how much cameras cost, basically the fact that, <laughs> we're gonna zoom in on my mouth when I talk. Basically, uh, investing a little bit in lighting and this is by all intents and purposes this is very cheap lighting when it comes to professional videography photography but a lot of you guys comment on the quality of my videos and it's basically just because of these lights here i could throw this cell phone up as my main cam and it would look really good because i have good lighting and that's where you're going to want to invest your money in other than your audio stuff and as i've already proven you can get a used focus rate 2i2 um, and that microphone probably together for somewhere around 130, 140 bucks, and then get a used SM57 for 50 bucks, and all your audio needs are covered if you're making good quality guitar related content. And then you can buy these lighting kits like here, you know, invest 150 bucks to $200 in really good lighting, or invest maybe 80 to $100 in a cheaper lighting set, and you're gonna have all that you really need in order to get uh, really, really good looking videos. So my couple of my other cameras that I mentioned to you guys here, this is my Sony a7 III camera. Again, got a great marketplace deal on this thing. I think I paid a thousand bucks for it with the kit lens, which is a really, really good deal. Over here, my 6300. You guys probably can't see this one hiding back here, but here's another Sony a6400 with another one of those Sigma lenses. Back there we have my uh one of my main shot cams down here that you guys see in a lot of videos that's another sony 6400 so i've invested a lot of money in cameras you guys don't have to do that you really don't i did it because i like the uh pacing of multi-camera videos especially for gear demos just because changing up the shot seems to keep the make the video more engaging over here, I just have a bunch of pedals. This is basically like a crap collection uh, surface where I kind of move things around. I'm constantly changing up the set and moving things around. So that's why I have stuff thrown all over the place. I use this stuff a lot and that's why it's in here and not in the other room that I'm about to show you guys. And then over here, I have some LED lights, but this is like a big battery charging station. <laughs> so yeah. Cable management, 10 out of 10. You guys can go ahead and rate it, but if it's not 10 out of 10, you're wrong. Bunch of extra batteries and stuff. It just allows me, especially on days when I'm feeling really motivated to just knock out a whole bunch of videos at once having some extra batteries. And then over here, you guys see the Quad Cortex and the Kemper Profiler. I've been making profiles and captures and selling them and you guys have been giving me uh, really good feedback on those. So that's those. And over here, we've got some cool stuff. We've got the two notes uh captor 8 and then we've got the captor x hiding back there the 16 ohm version up top we've got the kemper di it's a really clean di that i use for my captures and everything and then here i haven't used this yet but this is the tone x capture box which is basically uh, a high quality di for your amp signal we're going to dive into that very soon but yeah i have uh, again like i mentioned before these are the jbl eight inch probably way too big for this room but i got them when they were on sale from uh guitar center for something like 130 bucks a piece new so i kind of couldn't pass them up at the time and i didn't have good monitors so and here i have a massive 4k super unnecessary monitor really what this used to be is a little secondary living room but i turned it into a youtube studio and my girlfriend really loves that so no sarcasm there whatsoever. We're gonna move over here again. I've got extra tripods and stuff. A little tip on tripods, guys. I got the majority of my tripods at Goodwill. Uh, I'll just go up there and take a look every now and then and they sell tri like decent enough tripods for three to four dollars used. 
Now, these higher quality, these nice sturdier tripods that I have for my main cam and my secondary cam, those are like 80 bucks and they're worth it, especially if you have heavier cameras with heavier lenses, but you can get away with cheaper quality tripod stands, especially if you are just doing cell phone based videos. Over here, I have a pile of guitars. And then this last room is kind of just my unfinished portion of my basement. It's like the room of shame. The lights aren't even properly working in here right now, but this is where I store drum equipment. This is where I store all my extra guitars and amps and basically project stuff. This is actually where I started my YouTube channel right here. Uh, the first video that I made was my Crate Blue Voodoo. And then after that, my Triumph. Um, I have a little USB-C here so I can just bring my laptop in here and connect it to everything that you see. A little Focusrite 2i2 down there. I've just got a cheap gaming monitor and then some BX8s that I got off Facebook Marketplace for like 40 bucks, something ridiculous. Whole bunch of extra pedals, but this is a third rig if I were to need it. I don't even need two, so that's again the reason why uh, I said it was kind of over the top. But as you guys can tell, I'm a bit of a hoarder and I also just really like getting good deals. So when I find stuff for stupid cheap, I tend to pick it up and then never sell it. So over here, more drum stuff, more amps, more cabinets. This is the hall of shame here. Not shame because there's anything wrong with the gear, but shame because I should just not have this much stuff. But uh, yeah, that is pretty much everything, guys. So with that being said, as you can see, unfinished basement over there, that is the tour of my home studio slash content creation rig. Oh wait, I forgot, mics. All right, guys, so over here, um, I have a whole big old collection of microphones that you guys probably don't even know about. Also a whole bunch of collection of power tubes, but um, I've got a whole bunch of sets of drum mics. This is the Shure drum mic kit with the Beta 52A and all the SM57s. This is a Samson drum mic kit, which I got off eBay for um, $100 a few years ago when I first got into home recording. These things actually sound surprisingly good. And then we've got a bunch of random stuff, the Stellar here. I've got some Sterling microphones. I've got a, basically a whole bin of different mics. I've got the Audix uh, big drum mic kit. I forget exactly what it's called, but I have way more microphones than I need for what I do. When I got really into home audio and I kind of like everything else went off the deep end, but you guys don't need to do that in order to get quality recordings and quality video. Like I said, the things you really wanna focus on Get yourself some good lighting, get yourself a quality audio interface and a good microphone. And that's all you really need to get started, guys. That's more than I had when I got started. I did not have basically any of, I had the gear, of course, because that's why I started my videos, but I didn't have any of this stuff when I got started. And I kind of just built my rig as I went along, my, my content creation rig, into what it is now. It's just every time I would make a little money from the channel, every time I would make a little bit money from the gear, I would just reinvest it into kind of upping the quality of my channel. And that's something that I'm glad that I did, but it is not necessary for you guys. Like I said, the path to making quality uh, content is is cheaper than a lot of people probably think that it is so I hope that this video gave you some insight of you know what it what it takes for me to create the type of videos that I create and hopefully it gives you a good idea of where to start if you're looking to create your own videos and if you guys want me to do some sort of a tutorial on how to make a good YouTube video with just a cell phone and a cheap audio interface and, and a couple lights I would love to do that for you guys. I really just want to encourage people to basically feel a little bit more confident in starting their YouTube content creation career, hobby, whatever you wanna call it. It started out as a hobby for me. It turned into a career. I couldn't be more thankful. And so many people helped me along the way that I would love to return the favor for you guys. So if you guys wanna see a video like that, let me know down in the comments if you guys have any questions for me about my content creation rig that I didn't cover in this video, let me know down in the comments there as well. If you would like to help me uh, continue to add to this rig and up my quality and bring better gear to you guys, well, it just so happens to be Sweetwater's content creation sale month where they have stuff like this Sennheiser Type-C microphone that I am using. They have stuff like these Rode microphones that uh, are nice shotgun mics to stick on top of your cameras. They have these Sennheiser wireless kits. They have the Focusrite 2i2s. They have the 
uh, Personas, 1810Cs, they even have cameras there. They don't have the Sony stuff, but they have Panasonic cameras and Panasonic cameras are incredible. Go ahead and take a look at Taylor Danley's stuff. His stuff looks way better than mine. He just knows what he's doing a little bit better, but he also uses Panasonic cameras and lenses. So you can pick that stuff up over at Sweetwater. And if you generally just wanna help the channel, go down into the description, click that Sweetwater affiliate link regardless. That way, uh, Sweetwater knows that I sent you. It helps my channel and you guys, when you order something from Sweetwater, I get a little bit of a kickback. It costs you guys nothing extra and I'm very gracious for you guys in doing so. I'm very gracious for Sweetwater and being a affiliate with this channel. So. Yeah, if you guys like the video, hit the like button on the way out. Consider subscribing on your way out so you don't miss any more of my actual videos. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. This was very long-winded. Hope you guys have a great day. Kyle here again. We'll see you next time. You know what this wall is missing? Another amp. There we go.